I think I don't have a lot of time left, so I'll very quickly go through some um, ideas about esketamine, uh, which you may know has been recently approved as a treatment for treatment-resistant depression. Um, a lot of uh, psychiatrists have promoted this drug as being um, a, a brand new type of drug. Um, it's not just the same old steam engine. It works in a different way. Ketamine has been around for many years. It was used as an anesthetic agent and it causes a trance-like state, pain relief, sedation and memory loss. It's problematic because it causes psychotic symptoms. And so it's generally used in emergency circumstances or for animals. Most of the problems from ketamine arise from the increase in heart rate and blood pressure it can cause. And that means it can lead to heart failure and heart attack, more likely in people with pre-existing risk factors. And this means that blood pressure and heart rate are monitored carefully. It's also been a party drug. It's been known as psychedelic heroin because of its psychedelic effects. It produces a dissociative state, a sense of detachment from one's physical body and the external world, often called the K-hole. Many people enjoy this and it frightens others. It's normally ingested by snorting. A recreational dose is 60 to 250 milligrams and it rapidly causes tolerance, withdrawal symptoms and addiction in some people. Um, it's very popular in the UK. It's been associated with um, more than 100 deaths, including from traffic accidents and suicide. This is probably because ketamine impairs hand-eye coordination and balance, increasing the risk of traffic accidents. And in fact, in Hong Kong, where it was very popular, almost one-tenth of all fatal car accidents involve ketamine. Another problem is ketamine bladder, which is an ulcerative cystitis, which can lead to perforation of the bladder and inability to urinate and can require catheterization. It can also cause cognitive problems and depression in the long term. The withdrawal symptoms of ketamine include anxiety, trouble sleeping and depression. It's been known that intravenous ketamine can reduce depression scores like other anesthetics like propofol or nitrous oxide. And some people have suggested this may be similar to the psychoactive effects that make this drug popular with recreational users. So S-ketamine is one of the two mirror image molecules of ketamine. It's twice as strong like escitalopram is twice as strong as escitalopram. It's been approved for 50 to 80 milligrams. And given its double strength, this is very similar to the recreational doses people use, although some people use higher doses than that. And it's delivered in the same way through a nasal spray, similar to the snorting used recreationally. There were five studies that were submitted by Janssen to the FDA for approval. Three short-term, four-week studies, one withdrawal study, and one safety study. And I'll talk about each briefly. First of all, the people who were included in the studies were people who had major depressive disorder, have failed two antidepressants, and they could both be SSRIs, you were excluded if you had psychotic symptoms, if you had a history of suicidal behavior in the last year or suicidal ideas in the last six months. You were excluded if you had any alcohol or drug use and you were excluded if you had not responded to ketamine, S-ketamine or ECT in the past and there was no requirement for psychotherapy. Some have suggested that this is not consistent with most clinicians' 
experience of treatment resistant depression. This seems somewhat more mild. The madras was used to detect depression out of a score of 60. So normally the FDA requires two positive short term studies, that is statistically significant studies, but they relaxed the rules for esketamine and allowed one positive short term study and one withdrawal study because the company could not produce two positive short term studies. There were three short term studies performed. Two showed no statistically significant difference between salt water spray, the placebo, and esketamine. One trial showed a statistically significant difference between esketamine and placebo. In this trial, placebo reduced Madras score by 17 points, and the esketamine reduced the Madras score by a further four points. So just to show this quickly, these are the two non-significant trials. You can see the black line is placebo, a reduction of 15 points, and the two doses of esketamine had no significant difference from placebo, and a similar finding in older patients. This is the positive trial. You can see the placebo produced a 17 point reduction and esketamine produced an extra four points on the madras. There are two issues with this study. Number one, esketamine causes a metallic taste in the mouth and also causes psychoactive effects like dissociation. This would tend to let patients know which drug they're on and expectation effects might increase the effect of the drug. There's also the question of what is a clinically significant difference and similar to the slide that Joanna showed, uh, it's been worked out what a madras change versus a clinical impression from a doctor constitutes. And for a minimal improvement to be registered, a madras reduction of seven points is required. And so a four point reduction is less than would be detected as a minimal improvement. You need to have a 16 point reduction to be much improved, which is what placebo achieved. Um, and it's worth noting that the esketamine effect of four points was about one quarter the size of the placebo effect. Um, because they couldn't produce two positive studies, they were allowed to do a withdrawal study. That follows this pattern. Patients were given esketamine for 12 weeks. If they responded, that is, they halved their madras score, they continued, and they were then randomized to either continue their esketamine or to stop abruptly and be put on nasal uh, salt water spray. And their madras score was measured for the next year. And this is what they found. People in placebo relapsed more often. And you can see that the difference occurred over the first 30 days. After that, the lines came closer together until they got very close. There are a few issues with this study design. First of all, only patients who responded to esketamine were included, meaning it's an enriched population. Number two, esketamine has clear psychoactive effects, including dissociation. So patients will know that their treatment has stopped in the placebo group. So this would tend to unblind patients. And perhaps most importantly, Esketamine is known to have withdrawal effects, including insomnia, anxiety, and low mood. Um, it was stopped abruptly, and so it was likely to cause withdrawal effects. These would have been measured on the madras, which includes all of these domains, sleep, mood, anxiety, and appetite. And so withdrawal effects could have been misclassified as relapse. The fact that most of the relapses happened in the first four weeks is consistent with this because this is when withdrawal symptoms are most likely to occur. 
you can see the overlap between ketamine withdrawal symptoms and the madras here, and withdrawal symptoms were not reported for this study. There was also one site um, that was seen as an outlier, and if you remove it, in actual fact, after a few months, there's no difference between the two arms of the study. I'll just talk for two minutes about safety. So there were six deaths in these trials. All six deaths occurred in the esketamine arm, and there were none in the placebo arm. These deaths were three suicides, one fatal motor vehicle accident, um, one person died of heart and lung failure, one died of myocardial infarction. What's interesting about the causes of these deaths is they're all recognized from ketamine use, either in anesthetics or recreationally. The blood pressure spikes can cause heart attacks and heart failure, and impaired hand-eye coordination and dissociation can cause car accidents. And there were, in fact, five car accidents in the esketamine arm, one of which was fatal, and none in the placebo arm. There has been a lot of speculation about what caused the suicides, perhaps withdrawal effects, perhaps psychotic or psychedelic effects, or flashbacks. Um, this is an account of someone who used esketamine. Um, there are many positive and negative accounts. This man talks about uh, feeling that he is spinning, that he has a headache, that he couldn't move, that he began crying for his mother, and that he felt scared, and the effects lasted for longer than a day, which gives some context to the use of this drug. Um, there were also many other side effects. Half patients experienced dissociation, a third dizziness or sedation. 10% had significant blood pressure rises, and 10% had bladder-related problems reminiscent of ketamine bladder. Um, very briefly, in the long-term safety study, 15% of patients developed new onset suicidal ideas in the S-ketamine group, and six of these patients attempted suicide. Um, this is notable because this group of patients was selected for not being suicidal. They had had to have had no suicide attempts for 12 months and no suicidal thoughts for six months. So this increase is somewhat concerning. Uh, similar problems have been reported by doctors in the US since the drug has been released over the last 12 months. There's been an increased reporting of dissociation, sedation, feeling drunk, suicidal ideation, and also completed suicide. And the authors of this study concluded that the safety of this drug requires urgent clarification. I'll, I'll leave it there for some questions. Thank you.